Welcome into Sports Memos Betting Podcast NHL Edition. We got both of our NHL experts, Alex Smith and Andrew McGinnis, on with me. We're going to be breaking down the three games on tonight's slate. Also, a buy and fade team going into the second half of the NHL season. Just getting back from the NHL All Star break. But, guys, excited to have you on. Andrew McGinnis, welcome to the podcast. How are you, buddy? Yeah, doing great, Drew. This is awesome. This is going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited for this. Got the three of us going. Uh, Talking about, uh, you know, post-All-Star break, what we think about certain teams, buy and sell, should be a great time. How are you, Drew? I'm doing good, man. And, uh, yeah, you, 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 all three of us are on. And I, I've been with Sports Memo since August of 2014. I don't think we've ever had a multi-person, you know, more than two guys on the podcast at one time. So this might be a first. I don't know if you're a client out there, uh, a, a long-term listener, reach out to us on Twitter and, and let us know if this has ever happened before, but it hasn't happened since I've been here. And, and Alex B. Smith, Alex, welcome into the podcast. How are you? Yeah, thanks for having me, Drew. Yeah, I, I remember listening to the, to the podcast for for quite a while on here, and I don't think there ever has been uh, um, a multi-capper, uh, you know, uh, show before. So this is this is cool, cool to be a part of it. And like I said, you know, getting back into the the swing of things with the All Star break past us now, so it's uh, you know basically the, a rush for the playoffs now. You got about thirty thirty five games left for each of these teams, and uh, it's going to be fun the next several weeks. Yeah, and you, and you guys usually do a, an NHL um, kind of video podcast with uh, the Prez over at Wager Talk, so it's it's a good mm-hmm. thing to have you guys on here. So look out for that over there. But uh, I guess from time to time we can do this going forward if, if if this goes well. We got three games tonight. We're going to break down, but do want to get a bet on and fade team from each of you guys coming out of the break. Um, Alex, we'll come back to you. And guys, you can follow Alex on Twitter at AX Smith Sports. Um, great follow there for NHL news. But um, did you want to throw out a, a bet on team you're looking to uh, to bet here in the NHL out of the break? Yeah, one of the teams that I'm looking at here, and uh, it's really interesting because, like I said, there's a it's a kind of a, a in the Western Conference you have uh, the, you know your top teams. You look at the Nashville's, Calgary's. Vegas, you know, Vegas Golden Knights, and then at the bottom in the the two teams, there's two spots left in the the wild card race. There's a ton of teams there that have some shots uh, that can make a run for the playoffs. And the team that I'm looking at, a team that was really bad the last couple of years, and they're a young group. And it's the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, they've got some some solid developing talent led by Elias Pettersson, a guy who's just been absolutely sensational, 20 years old. He's got 23 goals and 22 assists in 40 games. Uh, he's missed some games due to injury. He's now slowly starting to get back into the fold. Uh, this is a team that, if you look at that Pacific Division, of course, they're not going to be able to just completely hang around with the Calgary's and Vegas's of the world, but they can beat teams like Arizona, beat teams like Edmonton that struggle. And if you look at their schedule uh, the rest of the way, they open up with, with a four-game uh, road trip, and then they play seven of their first nine games back from, on the road. If they can get through that stretch and maneuver, find some ways to beat some teams on the road, then they look down the line at, at the end of March where they have a big home stand. They can earn some points. I think they'll be able to sneak in and, and, and steal a wild card spot here. So I look for Vancouver uh, as a buy on team. There's a team that's going to be uh, more often an underdog, but I think they're going to be able to sneak past some teams uh, and make some noise late. All right, like in Vancouver, buy. Uh buy on uh at mcginnis picks that's andrew mcginnis twitter handle there do you have a uh, a bet on team out of the break andrew well a bet on team for me drew and this isn't one that's kind of you know too unique of one that's really too low in the standings but i'm looking at a team like the pittsburgh penguins uh a team that, that dropped a rough one last night and you know their captain Sidney crosby literally called out his team and he never really does that uh in a post-game media conference just simply said you know the effort wasn't there uh post all-star break we got to see more from our team and they're a team right now that's sitting in the first wild card spot right now but they're fourth in the metropolitan uh but the fact that they've been able to do it year after year and they continue to have that talent for me it's all about matt murray getting going and nets for them uh to get that kind of consistency level for them with goaltending we know the injury bug he's had uh throughout the years but I mean, just the the talent that they have. Uh, of course, I mentioned Crosby, Malkin, Castle. A guy like Jake Gensel needs to get going. Dominic Simon. This is a team that's ha- you know can control their division really, and it's all about their next few games out of this break. And I think that again, I know they're just kind of 
you know, this Pittsburgh team that's been great for the past several years, but right now they're sitting, sitting in that wild card spot. I really feel like over the next couple of weeks, they really make that push and we start seeing them light the lamp uh, in this league. So look for the Pittsburgh Penguins to start lighting up the scoreboard uh, a lot more than how they really were looking before the All-Star break. So uh, Pittsburgh Penguins for me are kind of my huge buy team right now. All right, so bet on Pittsburgh Penguins from McGinnis. Bet on the Vancouver Canucks from Alex B. Smith. Two uh, teams looking to bet their guys out of the break. And uh, both both of you guys have plays up at sportsmemo.com. Uh, Alex has his NHL top play, and Andrew has his NBA top play. And, guys, you can use the coupon code for this podcast, 10 off for 10 bucks off any play on the board, um, except for the Brent Crow $2 play which it is two dollar tuesday at sportsmemo.com every tuesday one of our uh, featured handicappers the hottest handicapper which is brent crow he's on a seven and zero top play run he has his play up at sportsmemo.com for just two dollars so check that out on the front page of sports memo also alex and andrews each individual picks which you can get uh ten dollars off using the coupon code one zero o f f 10 off at checkout. Guys, let's go for a uh, a fade team out of the break. McGinnis, we'll come back to you. Is there a, a team you got pegged here to to look to bet against out of the NHL All-Star break? Yeah, Drew, I think uh, Alex and I realistically could both uh, just agree right away on uh, the Edmonton Oilers kind of being a fade team, and that's one that I've really talked about uh, countlessly, and it's something that's kind of obvious. So I'm going to switch to a team like the Colorado Avalanche, and This Avalanche team, Drew, is a team that has so much talent, possibly one of the best lines, top two at least, uh, in the entire hockey league. And it's just a shame because they're running into a really tough schedule right now, and it's going to hurt them big time. Uh, They're going to be playing teams like uh, Boston, uh, like Washington. I just don't think they have it in them. I don't think they can really get things together defensively. The, the fact that they are leading by two, three goals in games and somehow end up choking these leads, uh, it just is not really a good look for them. You know, they're going to be playing a team like the Islanders that have, you know, the youth, the speed, the line depth, the, you know, the physicality that this Avalanche team does not seem to have with Nathan McKinnon having some injury problems. Of course, he's a great player. He's a beast out there, but he can't carry that load. And you often talk about how in certain leagues like the NBA, they're so top heavy right now. You just can't have that uh, in the NHL. You have to have depth. You have to have numerous, multiple scorers. And right now, we are not seeing that with the Colorado Avalanche. Uh, You know, I I like to look at team schedules down the stretch, post-All-Star break, and they're running into a really tough one with the Blue Jackets, Capitals, Islanders, Bruins, uh, and their next several games. So for me right now, unless they get their their, their stuff together defensively, this Avalanche team is going to be running into a lot of trouble in my eyes. So I'd be looking to kind of fade them, and I bet you'll get some uh, decent odds with that as well. Okay, so looking to fade the Avs down the stretch. And uh, Alex, what about you? Do you have a fade team or two that you want to throw out? Yeah, I do. But one thing to interestingly note about, uh, you know, as we're talking about these, like I said, my, my buy on team was Vancouver, his fade team being Colorado. Those two teams play on, on Saturday night. So, uh, you know, something that, you know, uh, betters might want to circle, uh, like I said, a, a matchup of teams that are jockeying. Basically, they're right neck and neck in the Western Conference standing. So that should make for a good battle. But I'm looking at the Eastern Conference here uh, with a team that I'm selling, and that's the Columbus Blue Jackets. This is a team that, if the season were to end right now, would be in the playoffs. But, uh, uh, the biggest news with this team is that they can't sign, or at least their their main star is willing to uh, unwilling to sign a long term extension with the team. That's Artemi Panarin, who has 19 goals and 34 assists in 46 games. He's the team's leading scorer. They're going to have to possibly trade him because this has been a whole debacle all year. He wants out of Columbus. Uh, and, and this is a team that desperately needs him because if you look at uh, as a bit of a drop off. Uh, Cam Atkinson is the top goal scorer with 27 goals here, but other than, than Panarin, he's the best playmaker. He's one of the best playmakers in the world. This guy is uh, uh, seriously an underrated talent in my eyes. And for them to have to move him, also there's been issues with Sergei Bobrovsky, their star goalie, Vesna Trophy winner, uh, their main number one guy. If they, if they were to have to get rid of him or have if he's unhappy and he wants to go somewhere else, this team's going to be in a world of trouble trying to make a playoff spot, hang around that Metropolitan Division with, as Andrew mentioned, the Pittsburgh Penguins, uh, the defending champions, the Washington Capitals, the New York Islanders, a really good team on the rise right now, leading that Metropolitan Division. Uh, I just don't think they're going to be able to hang around. Like I said, you got teams coming up like Carolina as well. Uh, 
Uh, there's a lot of teams that are under the radar that right outside of that wild card spot that where somebody's going to have to get pushed out. And I think it's Columbus is a team that we've seen collapse uh, in the postseason or in the second half for a couple of years now. If they have to move Panarin, they're going to be in a lot of trouble. And Alex, let me let me come back at you because Columbus is hosting Buffalo tonight. We got seventy five seventy six on tonight's slate, top of the yeah. card here, total of six, and they're laying a big number here, minus one seventy. So if they're on your fade list, are are they on your fade list as as early as tonight? Yes, absolutely. You got a, a Buffalo team that you know we've seen them struggle. They were struggling quite a bit going into the All Star break. But one of the biggest things is that they they are a team that really needed this weekend to kind of heal and rest. I mean, you had guys uh, like their their team leader Jack Eichel uh, had dealt with some injuries. He was just starting to come back. They're trying to work, work him back into the lineup. Those extra days off and, and a couple of days of practice now getting ready to go uh, and battle a team like Columbus. I think that that's a, a good sign, and uh, I think that we're going to see both these teams skate pretty hard tonight, but I think Buffalo is, is a live dog. You find them at round plus 150, 155. Uh, this is a, a team that when they get things rolling, we saw them really heat up uh, right before Christmas time, uh, and this is a team we know they can play some decent hockey. They've got some solid goaltending uh, at times, and like I said, they got a couple of playmakers, young playmakers that can make a difference. Okay, so a plus 150 price tag, is, is that a type of profile that you look to bet a lot in 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 the NHL, Alex, as far as these big underdogs? I do, especially now that we're getting to the second half of the season where teams really tighten up, especially something else that you'll see a lot of, and, and I'm, I feel like I've mentioned this before on, on a previous podcast, that, you know, the, the different derivative markets, looking at three-way betting, uh, regulation lines, or, or, or games to go into overtime, because a lot of things now where you have teams that if it's tied late in a game 2-2 two, two, or 3-3 three, three with about maybe let's say 10 minutes left in the third period teams are going to be a, a lot more conservative because they want to make sure that they get at least one point they're not going to go for broke uh and possibly lose the game in regulation and miss out on getting that point they want to kind of drag things out so we'll see a lot of games more games going to overtime we haven't seen a lot of overtimes in the first half of the season but i think we're going to see a lot more overtime games as teams try to drag out and get that that make sure they could guarantee themselves one point in the standings and then try to get that second point uh, in overtime. So when you have games going to overtime where one one breakaway can give you the win in the game, you know it's it's like a coin flip almost. But now you want to you have the the value there with the underdog. So looking for big dogs in the second half is something I, I'm definitely uh, an advocate of. And, and Alex, what you you know you mentioned teams or uh, games more likely to go into overtime here towards towards the end of the season with. Uh, teams really just wanting to hold on to that one point is there a, a, a way that you would recommend for more newer betters out there maybe talking to somebody like myself as far as somebody that doesn't bet nhl a lot ways to kind of take advantage of that um is there a certain type of bet or betting on the underdog or or just any way that you can think of well, I guess I mean the way I always research the, making these these because they're overtime prop bets, and the way I research uh, these is basically just looking through and seeing how many one goal games has a team had in their recent form, how many games have gone to overtime. For example, if you look at uh, Columbus, they they had uh, three of their last eight games going to overtime, and they've had a couple of close one goal games. So they're a team that plays tight. When you those are things you want to look for. But yeah, but basically, if look for the regulation line, or some books will call it the three way line. Uh, you could where you can either bet team A or team B, or you can bet a draw. And the draw meaning that it would just go into an overtime or a shootout. Uh, so those are the things, and like you said, you get a great return on those. Usually uh, around three to one is average. You see plus between plus two eighty five and plus three ten. So uh, like I said a great return for uh, you know for a, a wager, that, especially when you see in teams that play uh, close, don't have a lot of offense, have to slow things down a bit. Nice, so, Andrew. Let's get you in here. Do you ever bet that? Like bet on on the draw, like as like a soccer bet. Yeah, I'll be honest, Drew. I mean, uh, Alex has been the one that's kind of introduced me to uh, betting on the overtime, and uh, I've seen him cash a lot of tickets with it. But to kind of add on to what he was saying, for me, uh, I've I really looked at the plus one and the, and the minus one and the regulation bets these days. But uh, really specifically for a team like the Buffalo Sabres, Drew, there's a lot of teams where statistically they could, um, you know, they more often win by two if they're going to win or win by a certain number. Certain teams, like these two teams, both of them, Buffalo and Columbus, they're, they're playing a lot of close games, like very tight. Uh, you know, they get the lead. They play very defensive. They clog the ice up. It's kind of their style. So with Buffalo right now, I'm looking at 
um, the sports memo odds page right now, and you can get them, you know, plus one and a half at around you know dollar sixty five, which seems a little bit pricey, but for a team that, like Alex said, is a very live dog right here, you know, I think they could win it outright, or if not, keep it within at least one goal. So that's something to keep in mind, and. You know, as far as uh, looking at these really tight games, it's really important not only look at the past um, several matchups that they've played and teams that they've looked at, but it's important to find out who they were actually playing against because there's a lot of teams right now, Drew, coming out of this All-Star break. You can look at their, you know, their past, let's say, 10 games before the All-Star break and say, wow, you know, they didn't look too bad. But then you actually check out who they are playing against, and it was rather weaker teams like Anaheim, Detroit, etc. So it's really important for one when you're doing that kind of stuff to look at the teams they were actually playing against when they were going to overtime or playing in those tight games. But it's a great point, and uh, you know, oftentimes we want to avoid that juice. And if we can, I've talked about it with you before, Drew. It's good to look regulation, good to look minus one, and uh, good to find those spots. So uh, I fully agree with Alex. And guys, thanks for tuning in. This is uh, the three person podcast for the NHL. I am Drew Martin talking with Alex B. Smith and Andrew McGinnis. You can follow McGinnis on Twitter at McGinnis Picks and Alex on Twitter at AX Smith Sports. Um, let's move on down down the line here on tonight's slate. We got game number 77-78, Winnipeg at Boston. Total of six with the Bruins laying a hefty number at home. Looks like mostly right around minus 160 in Boston. How would you look to bet this one, McGinnis? Well, we just talked about it, how we can reduce those odds, and uh, I'm going to do so right now uh, with this Winnipeg-Boston game. We've got a team in Winnipeg that's coming off a, a relatively soft loss, uh, a disappointing loss, to say the least, and uh, I didn't expect that from them whatsoever. Uh, you know, 3-1 loss, uh, I just think that that's something that they have to build off of. They have to kind of show some energy tonight and, and look better, but they're heading into a TD Garden in Boston where they have not looked good. They've dropped 15 of their last 16 games, Drew, uh, in Boston and TD Garden. And I'll tell you guys, uh, you know, I've told both of you I was there uh, two months ago to check out a game, and that is one hell of a tough place to play in. I mean, first of all, the fans are ruthless, the crowd is loud, the music's bumping, and uh, and the players have a little more jolt to their step. They're a little more pepped up, it seems, uh, when they're playing at home, and uh, I don't really blame them uh, with the guys that they have. And, you know, looking at, again, I always talk about the being top-heavy and having that depth, but, again, they have, if not the best line in the entire National Hockey League uh, with Brad Marchand, with Patrice Bergeron, and David Pasternak. Uh, I would really debate anybody on that versus the, of course, Tampa line and Colorado line. I think Boston kind of has that set. But it's really important to look at, on the season, Winnipeg has averaged 3.4 goals per game, Boston 2.9 goals per game. But in the last 10 meetings, so a large scale here, last 10 meetings between these two teams, Winnipeg just 2.2 goals per game, uh, and Boston a solid three. You've got Dustin Bufflin out in this game, and uh, you know obviously we know how important he is uh, for this Winnipeg Jets team. He's obviously a huge, big body back there, and he makes this Winnipeg team a lot, a lot more tough. I mean, we know the size that they have, but the grit that they really have and the grit they can show uh, is really important. And you know, you look at their last several games before that All Star break, and I mentioned it's important to look at who these teams are beating and who they're losing to. And, uh, you know, first of all, they beat a team like Dallas. Okay, that doesn't really mean too much to me. They beat a team like Anaheim. Doesn't mean too much to me. Beat a team like Detroit. Again, doesn't mean too much to me. You know, uh, they're losing to the teams like Pittsburgh, Vegas, that they should be competing against uh, at a decent scale here. So, for me, that worries me. Uh, the Jets are 1-4 and four straight up in their last five road games. And Tuka Rask is out, but who else is better to have as your backup goalie right now than Halak. I mean, Halak's looked like a number one uh, pretty much all year long. So it's pretty great when you have a team that can have practically two number one goalies uh, in your lineup. So for me, uh, to say the least, I, I, I love this this Bruins team down the stretch right now. I love this team throughout their entire lineup. You can get them in regulation at plus 100. And the fact is, I'd love to say this Winnipeg Jets team can bounce back after that absolutely brutal performance last night. But I just think entering TD Garden, where they 
obviously haven't fared well recently. Yeah. I think they come in, and, and not, again, they come close, but they won't really fare well against this big, bad Bruins team. I'd also lean to the over in this game. Uh, I think we could see some goals, but when it comes down to it, this Boston team's going to get things done. I look to see David Pasternak have an absolute standout of a second half of the season, and uh, I think Boston gets things done. So I'm going to go with Boston Bruins in regulation, plus 100. We're going all the way, Drew, from around minus 145 where the line opened up. We're at minus 160, 65, 70 now at some spots. Getting that all the way to plus 100 with the regulation line with this Bruins team. Okay, nice. I like that. That's a that's a big shift in the number. And you you also bring up the name Halak. That I, I remember that name from a couple of years ago. He, he's pretty good, right? He's been around for a while. Yeah, don't remind me. My Montreal Canadiens traded him away. That could have been a good little one-two punch with Carey Price. So it's always tough to see him doing really well against uh, against my team, uh, the Canadians. But yeah, again, I mean, the, it's so important, Drew, to to have that one-two punch, to have a backup goaltender that can pretty much be as good as a number one. And, you know, just a quick, not to get too off topic, but Winnipeg last night uh, threw out Laurent Brossois, and they've got, you know, a guy like that, I believe, with like a 10-4 and record. So, you know, oftentimes your backup has a great record, and of course they're playing a lot weaker of teams, but if you can have a backup go out there and not have to worry about how he's going to play and the rebound control and stuff like that, because they aren't playing as many games, so they're not used to being out there, but if you can have a backup that you can trust on a nightly basis to be able to have to go in in case of injury or flu or whatever, uh, it definitely makes you a lot more calm. So uh, I don't really feel any kind of worry the fact that I know Halak's going to be in Nets tonight. Good stuff, Andrew. And guys, remember the coupon code 10 off at checkout for any play on the board outside of the $2 play for $2 Tuesday, but any other play on the board for tonight or any play this week for $10 off the retail price at sportsmemo.com. That coupon code is 10 off at checkout. We got one more game here to complete the every game on the board in the NHL. 79-80, Philadelphia at the New York Rangers. High total here, Alex, six and a half, and it looks like a pretty evenly matched game with the Rangers laying minus 115 to minus 120, depending where you're shopping. Yeah, both these teams kind of struggled early in the year, and then they've come back uh, to basically uh, you have have New York going into the break on a three-game win streak. You have Philadelphia going to a three-game win streak and then pick up the win against Winnipeg, as Andrew was mentioning, that 3-1 win, which is a bit of a shocker. Uh, honestly, because it, like I said, it's a Philly team that has struggled. They've had seven goaltenders this year, and uh, I, I tweeted it out. I said, when your team has seven goaltenders, it means you don't have a goaltender at all, because this is a time of year where you really need to buckle down and settle with one guy uh, and have you carry you the rest of the way. But with that being said, this is probably a good spot here for Philadelphia. Normally, you'd want to fade a team on the second night of a back-to-back, but that hasn't been an issue for the Flyers. They're three and four in that situation. One of the three wins they picked up was against the New York Rangers, and this is a team that they've dominated as of late they've won five straight meetings uh and, and they've won six of the last eight uh and this is some by some wide margins too a seven to four victory uh, a couple of, of shutouts a five nothing victory a four nothing victory and that three two victory that happened uh early in this year as well so this is a flyers team that i'm, I'm really thinking i don't know if they're going to be able to make a, a a run to the playoffs because like i said they had so much issues with defensively and different things but i think they could catch a new york team it's a team that we've seen kind of Go, uh, they run their Jekyll and Hyde kind of thing as far as being a really solid offensive team, and then all of a sudden the offense kind of dies down, and then they're just all about their defense. Then the goaltending kind of falls apart. They haven't really been consistent in, in any form or fashion this year, but getting Philly right now, you can find it anywhere between plus a dollar five. Uh, I'm also seeing up as high as plus a dollar ten, and if you look at the regulation price, you can even catch it plus one seventy five. But uh, I'm just going to go with the standard money line play here. I'm thinking with the Flyers plus one hundred five, they should be able to take care of the Rangers and extend that that winning streak uh, and over the last several meetings. All right, good stuff, Alex. And, and you bring up you know the seven goalies. It, it, it brings a question to my mind. Um, would you say the NHL goalie is more important to his team, you know, betting wise, than than say the pitcher in baseball, a quarterback in the NFL, point guard in the NBA? Would you say it's the single most important position, or would you say one of those other positions is more important? No, I, 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 I you made a great point. I equate it exactly to a pitcher in baseball, and I've I've been an advocate for a long time of saying that. Books should list goaltenders like they list uh, starting pitchers because if you think, let's say, for example, uh, let's take a look at last night's game with Flyers and Jets. Connor Hellebuck is a much better goalie than Laurent Brassois. If I'm thinking Connor Hellebuck's going to be starting the first game back out of a, of a break, 
Uh, and then all of a sudden they make the change to Brassois. I would <laughs> definitely that makes it a world of difference to whether I want to keep that bet alive or not. So uh, that's just a perfect example, uh, perfect correlation. There is that goaltenders, especially this time of year too. Uh, as Andrew mentioned with a team like Boston, when you have two goalies that could easily be a number one, that's way more valuable than having uh, a workhorse goalie. Like let's say for example in Vegas where you have a guy like Mark Andre Fleury who's just been an absolute workhorse playing virtually every game it seems like, uh, and then you have a guy like like Malcolm Subban, his backup, just kind of come in and spell him against some of the, the weaker teams in the league. Yeah, that, that kind of system works in the season, but you got to understand, uh, you know, you're going to go through this grueling season and then get ready for an even more grueling, uh, you know, turnaround in the postseason. You want to keep that number one guy fresh. So to have a two-goalie system that's solid, that's worth something. But when you start talking about five, six, seven goaltenders, uh, that that's that's a, uh, an issue. And I, of course, it's been injuries for Philadelphia, but it's been like that for about 25 years. This team, this franchise, has just not <laughs> been able to hold on to one goaltender <laughs> and keep him the whole way. So it's just kind of a, a mess. And hopefully, they can figure that out. And Carter Hart, he's the, the goalie of the future. He's the guy who's expected to go in net tonight as well. Uh, I think he's the guy they need to really start relying on. Give him this work now, whether they start winning and, and make a playoff run or they start losing and they're in a good position for the draft uh, this summer. Either way, they need to give yeah. put the confidence in Carter Hart to be the number one guy going forward. And McGinnis, yeah, jump in here. Do you have any disagreements with what Alex said? Well, I think that a uh, good point to add to kind of just to, to build on what Alex is saying and to your great question is that it's also a good opportunity to, to kind of cash some tickets from a betting perspective when you have that backup in. And that's why it's so important. And I've talked about this personally with you, Drew, about, you know, overnight plays and looking at things overnight or looking ahead at schedules and stuff like that. Because if you are ahead of the books or you are, you know, intelligent enough to think, hey, maybe this backup's going to be in there. Or maybe this guy's going to be starting here, or this or that. I bet you the average Joe last night might have thought Hellebuck would be in Nets. But, of course, this is the bigger game tonight against Boston. So, of course, Hellebuck's going to be playing in the bigger game. You know, lots of times this year, uh, Niemi has been in Nets as a backup for Montreal, and they've taken care of business and won that game. And we've got a lot better of odds against weaker teams with the Canadians since their backup is in and not Carey Price. So, as much as sometimes it's good to fade backups, I think it's kind of overrated, Drew, because... You can't just fade a team every time their backup's in. They're not going to lose every single time or else they wouldn't be playing on that team, right? So I know it sounds very simple to say that, but uh, it's also kind of a good opportunity to get teams at a cheaper price or possibly a plus price if you think that team is strong enough and the and the goaltender can give them a you know a, a chance, then it's, it's good to kind of back them and you get better uh, better prices. I mean, from a straight up perspective, Obviously, you want to look to see when backups are going to be in there. But from odds perspective, there can be a lot more value if you like a team and you like their backup as well, then it's good to take them. Okay, good stuff. Good point there, McGinnis. And uh, guys, I guess we could just go around for for final thoughts here. And uh, let me just leave you with the coupon code here, 10 off any play on the board at sportsmemo.com. Also, remember, it's $2 Tuesday, so you can get Brent Crow's uh, top college basketball play for just two bucks at sportsmemo.com make sure to check that out guys uh andrew mcginnis man thanks for the time follow him on twitter at mcginnis picks he has his top nba play up there which you can get it for uh ten dollars off using the coupon code 10 off at checkout but mcginnis any closing thoughts here before we shut this down Closing thoughts, uh, possibly just want to wrap things up uh, with the with the trade last night. I mean, Maple Leafs finally get in that defenseman they needed with Jake Muzzin uh, from the Kings, and it's uh, it's a big trade for them. They didn't have to give up anything too special, didn't have to give any you know huge picks up, they didn't lose, lose Nylander, didn't lose Kapanen. Uh, it's good to see for them. I mean, uh, as far as a team that's been chasing that spot, they've got the young guys like Nylander, like Matthews, uh, like Marner, you know, so, many spe- so much special talent. But it was always that kind of decor. And now they've kind of had those top four defensemen. To be, to be able to to kind of put him up there with, with Morgan Riley is going to be outstanding. So with a guy like Muzzin, uh, Drew, he had a plus 10 rating, uh, which is you know exceptional for a team, for a guy especially that was playing on a weak team like the Kings, uh, to go over and now be a top two, top one uh, real defenseman on this Leafs team that's you know sitting at the top of the Eastern Conference with up there with the Tampa Bay Lightning. It, it's pretty awesome. So, you know, as much as I hate the Leafs, as far as a betting perspective goes, uh, it's pretty good for them. So I got to be happy for the Leafs. And man, they really did a great job. Shout out to Kyle Dubas, the GM, uh, the new GM there for the Leafs, doing a great job over there in Toronto. And uh, yeah, big news in the hockey world, guys. 
right, McGinnis. Well, and he's sitting 59% year-to-date in NHL totals, so uh, a good handicapper there on the ice. And we also got Alex B. Smith. Follow him on Twitter, at Sports. 18-6 and six run on NHL totals. That's 75% on the ice in the totals market. So Alex doing very well as as well. And he has his top NHL play going tonight at sportsmemo.com. Alex, any closing thoughts before we shut this down? Yeah, a couple of notes. One thing, to go back uh, just a, a short bit, talk about that Flyer Ranger game tonight and, and mentioning backups. It's going to be a battle of backups with that game. you got Anthony Stolarz that will be a net for the Flyers. He's 2-3-2. Two, and two. He's kind of struggled a little bit, but that was earlier in the year. He kind of uh, played some games and then was sent back down to the AHL for a while. He's going up against Alexander Georgiev, who's been uh, King Hendricks backup in, in New York this year. Hasn't really fared that well. Don't be fooled by his 6-8 record. This guy's let in a lot of soft goals in some of, some of his stars. So like you said, you can't just blindly fade a backup because if you look at Philly side, you're thinking, oh, okay, AHL call-up, this would be a guy I want to bet against. But uh, this guy who's been in the NHL as a backup all year in Georgia, he's really kind of the guy you want to go fade against. But uh, kind of the touch on also with the Muzzin trade, I think I, I agree with Andrew what he said, excellent deal for Toronto to pick up a guy. Muzzin's not just a rental guy either. This is a guy that they can kind of hang on to uh, and maybe sign uh, for a couple of years as well and keep with that defensive core. They needed some they desperately needed help in the blue line. They have great goaltending. We know the scoring prowess that they provide. Uh, so now having a, a guy, a proven uh, guy with playoff experience on that blue line, that's going to be huge for a Leafs team that's desperately looking to end their cup drought. So, uh, like I said, we're going to see a lot more great trades like that and a lot more things that are going to affect the market. And this is just a fun time to be watching hockey, betting hockey, uh, as we get ready for the push for the playoffs. Guys, great podcast. Glad we did this. Um, and, and best of luck with your guys' bets tonight. So let's do this again soon. Everyone out there, thank you for tuning in. We'll uh, we'll do this as soon as possible next time. The NHL betting podcast with both Alex and Andrew. Best of luck with your bets. We'll be uh, back tomorrow with some Robbie Vino talking college basketball. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>